Step one, filtering the water. The New Life International water purifier will kill harmful bacteria in the water, but it will not filter out large particles such as dirt, wood, or plant material. Filtering out these particles before treating the water greatly improves the efficiency of the water purifier as well as the overall water quality. This can be done using manufactured filters, sand filters, or a simple sheet or towel, or by allowing the sediment to settle in the bottom of a container prior to purification. New Life does have reusable Micron filters available for purchase as an additional accessory. Once this is done, the water is ready to be purified. Step 2. Preparing the salt solution. Pour the water into the water bottle until it is approximately halfway full or 400 milliliters. This does not have to be purified water, but it does need to be free of debris and mud. Rainwater is ideal if available. Step 3. Pour salt into the measuring cup until it's full. Step 4. Pour the salt into the water bottle, replace the lid, and shake until the salt has dissolved in the water. Step 5. Pour the salt water solution into the chlorine tube. The water level should be between the minimum and maximum stickers on the tube. An extra water may be needed in order to reach the desired level. Step 6. Screw the cap into the top of the chlorine tube. Hand tighten, do not over tighten. Preparing the sodium hydroxide solution. Step one, fill the water bottle with 800 milliliters of water and pour it into the sodium hydroxide tube. Again, this water does not have to be purified, but like the water used for the chlorine tube, it needs to be cleaned of debris and mud. Rain water is ideal if available. The water level should be between the minimum and maximum stickers on the tube. Step 2. If using plain water, add a pinch of salt. If using sodium hydroxide solution from a previous use of the purifier, this step is not necessary. When finished using the purifier, save the sodium hydroxide solution in a labeled bottle to be used the next time the purifier is operated. This increases the efficiency of the purifier and will speed the startup. Starting the purifier. Step one, make sure that the solutions are in both the chlorine and sodium hydroxide tubes and that all of the hoses and tubings are connected. Make sure the cap is on the chlorine tube and that the test valves are closed. Step two, start the submersible pump by attaching the leads to the battery. The red to the positive, the black to the negative. Do not connect the purifier to the battery yet. Step three, check the chlorine tube. If the pump is operating correctly, there will be bubbles in the tube. Step four, once there are bubbles in the chlorine tube, it is okay to connect the purifier to the battery. Again, red to the positive, black to the negative. If the purifier is working, there will be bubbles in the clear tube on the left side of the hub. Testing the water. Once the purifier is operating, the chlorine level of the water must be tested. The chlorine test kit included with your McGuire water purifier is equipped with chlorine testing solutions only. You will use the left side of the test kit
to measure the chlorination levels. On the Venturi, there are two water testing valves. The first valve, A, is the primary test valve and tests chlorine levels in the tank. The second valve, B, is for testing the chlorine levels coming out of the purifier. The chlorine content of the water purification process will always be tested through valve A. If water is tested out of valve B while the purifier is running, it will always show high chlorine content. This is where the chlorine gas is introduced to the circulating water flow. It is not an indicator of chlorine levels in the tank. Step 1. Once the purifier has been running for several minutes, fill the left side of the test kit vial next to the yellow blocks with water from valve A. The right side of the vial is used for pH testing and will not be used to test chlorination. Step 2. Add one drop of solution from the bottle to the water. Cover the opening with the cap or a finger and shake until mixed well. Step 3. Compare the color of the water with the yellow blocks next to it. If it is the same color as the 5 parts per million block or darker, the water has enough chlorine in it to kill disease-causing bacteria and parasites. The purifier can now be turned off. If the water is below 5 parts per million, or a lighter yellow than the top block, keep the purifier going and continue to test until 5 parts per million is reached. After each test, dispose of the vial contents properly. The testing solutions are potentially hazardous and should not be added to the treatment tank or water supply. Step 4. Once the chlorine level has reached 5 parts per million, shut down the purifier by first disconnecting the purifier cables from the battery. Then disconnect the pump cables, or if you are using an electric pump, unplug the pump to stop the water circulation process. The water must be allowed to set for at least one hour to allow contact time for the chlorine to kill the bacteria and parasites. After one hour, retest the water in the tank. If the water is two parts per million or higher, the same color as the middle yellow box, the water is safe to drink. If it is below two parts per million after one hour, or there is no color at all, the chlorine levels have dropped below safety standards of residual chlorine protection, possibly due to contaminants in the tank. Look for sources of contamination such as a dead animal or equivalent in the water supply. Remove whatever is impacting the water, rerun the water purifier, and repeat the entire process. Once you have started the purifier, you can do a preliminary test to demonstrate chlorine levels from both valves. Conduct a test from valve B as per instructions and the results should show high chlorine content. Testing from valve A should show little or no chlorine, but will increase over time as the purifier operates. When testing the water and using the yellow color blocks, use a bright, well-lit background such as a sunlit sky. Testing against a dark background or in the evening may make judging the different shades of yellow for an accurate reading of the chlorine level difficult. The instructions on the test kit solutions recommend using two or three drops. Only one drop is needed and we recommend this for longevity of the kit in the field. An exception to this one drop rule is if the water turns greenish when adding the solution to the test vial. In that situation, there are mineral interferences in the water affecting the indicator and you will need to add more drops of the testing solution. Upon depletion of the testing solutions, contact New Life International for replacements or find a swimming pool supply company closest to the purifier site location. In step 4, we mentioned contaminants depleting the chlorine levels after the one hour contact time. This could be caused by several things and they are most likely confined to your treatment tank. Potential contaminants could be buildup of silt or sludge, debris, or animal remains. Prevention and solutions to these issues could range from filtration of the water prior to filling the tank to maintaining the integrity of the treatment tank, or tanks if using a multiple tank setup by keeping it clean and safe from outside contaminants.